this is a, my first uh, interesting case uh, conference uh, that uh, virtually. So in case uh, you haven't uh, seen any interesting case, uh, so here it is. Uh, mainly the, the topic today will be uh, uh, spinal infection. Basically, I want to review the uh, what is the typical teaching of spinal infection and uh, and what are some tricks and uh, what how can we apply those tricks in our uh, daily practice. I have some case uh, along with it. Anyway, so basically the t traditional teaching is uh, spinal infection is about uh, T2 hyperintensity on MRI with diffuse marrow abnormality uh, and then sometimes with epidural uh, enhancement and there's abscess in the epidural space or uh, so as uh, paraspinal region. So this is a traditional teaching. Um, of course, there are there are epidural abscess here. They can see them extending the epidural space. Uh, sometimes they are just seated. You don't see the um, discitis or osteomyelitis. But uh, when you see non-contrast enhancement portion, that's called abscess. When you see all enhancement, that's called phlegma. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, the discitis we all know basically. Supposedly, this uh, the infection spread to the disc and started infect uh, started infection, and then causing disc destruction, and uh, the T1 hypointensity and contrast enhancement. But this sometimes can awfully look like a modic type one amplitude changes where the uh, spinal instability arise. So basically, uh, I I just want to reintroduce the um, the help uh, of claw sign. Uh, maybe you heard about the claw sign. Uh, basically, it is this article about diffusion weighted MRI claw sign improved differentiation of infection from DJD of the spine. The theory is uh, the claw sign is a claw like this kind of shape, a claw sign diffusion. Basically, if you without diffusion, you can use a T2 fat suppressed uh, images uh, as a guideline as well. It doesn't have to be diffusion. Um, so basically, this is suggestive of DJD. Uh, they are basically, to me, a kind of mimicking uh, instability anteriorly. There's so much micromotion here, the body's reaction is trying to wall it off. So that is the claw. And uh, there are different categories of claw sign. So category one is definitely a claw sign. Category two is a probable claw sign. Three is questionable because c getting parallel and then the signal too weak, and the four is negative claw sign, diffuse signal. So this is more suggestive of uh, infection, and this is um, discitis. So let's uh, take a look, see uh, some cases, and let's see whether it, it works or not. Uh, by the way, my cases are uh, just some are just uh, teaching cases. I may not use the word claw sign in there, but uh, now I'm starting the uh, interesting case show and tell next. Mm, this is a 77-year-old uh, uh, history of a lady uh, questionable discitis. So this one you can see uh, the contrast enhancement is diffuse, there's vertebral amplitude destruction, uh, and there's epidural contrast enhancement. You can see that the enhancement, uh, this diffusion is like diffuse. Uh, the T2 images, you can see that this signal is bright. It's T2 hyperintense. So if it's dark, it's very unlikely to have uh, discitis. So this one is uh, so far discitis and osteomyelitis. So far, it's very classical with epidural infection and uh, all the contrast enhancement in the peri, uh, paraspinal uh, soft tissue. Uh, maybe this part is abscess. Those patients frequently uh, have pain and then usually have poor imaging quality because they will move. So, but don't be discouraged. Keep looking and try to squeeze as much information out of it. Uh, you know, for this case, uh, about uh, five days later, patient had a surgery, removed some uh, spinal, uh, spinal process, and cleaned up the uh, uh, abscess. 
but still you see them more you can see the bony destruction and uh, because of the epidural abscess probably caused so much pain maybe compressing on the cord I think the uh, surgery is to decompress to uh, prevent a cord uh, infarct uh, but this one have better quality this is, this is discitis and osteomyelitis now this is a, this a different case uh, about a 70 year old uh, female history of uh, anal cancer uh, was treated with chemotherapy and uh, radiation uh, present with uh, extremely weakness the questionable uh, back pain uh, uh, had some spinal injury due to the history is uh, throughout uh, compression so they did, a, they did a thoracic and lumbar spine and this one the th uh, thoracic spine shows some lesion here is T1 with hyperintense T1 lesion in the uh, epidural space and the hyperintense T2 compressing on the cord that's uh, no question about that this is a T2 showing that uh, something is pressing on the cord. Cord is like the gray stuff. Here's a bright signal, bright signal. So that is the um, hematoma. Uh, that was uh, causing severe cord compression and patient was operated on. So this is um, ab about a month and a half later, patient was operated on for decompression of the hematoma, so no more cord compression. Everything's fine, but uh, patient present with a back pain. So on the right side is the previous study, and you can see that's gone. Uh, however, you can see the there is abnormal T2 edema of T12 and L1, and then tiny bit of hyperintensity T2 signal in the verte intervertebral disc. That signal is not much more than other s levels, so it's uh, not very standing out. Also, the marrow signal has to be suppressed with fat suppression. Then you can see the edema. Without fat suppression, because so much marrow fat, you cannot even tell that's edema just from routine satchel T2. You need to fat suppress to call that uh, marrow edema. That's why the T1 is very helpful. You're looking for the low T1 signal in case you don't have the fat suppress, um, fat suppress image. Uh, but st still, fat suppress is very helpful because T1 low and T2 low, you could uh, assume that could be sclerosis. So we have to need some kind of fast suppression images to prove that it's marrow edema and we have some uh, mer uh, disc signal so there could be discitis and osteomyelitis uh, there's no claw sign at the time uh, we didn't do the sagittal diffusion no, we just see axial diffusion axial diffusion and you can see the marrow signal abnormality here uh, you can't tell much more than that but basically there's marrow edema uh, as a verification on the diffusion because the patient uh, present with abdominal pain and right lower quadrant abdominal pain, so the patient also had a CAT scan uh, on the same day. In this CAT scan, you can kind of see there is vertebral amplitude irregularity and and the destruction erosion here. This was not pr uh, prospectively identified, but in retrospect, we can uh, correlate it to prove that is a. Uh, infection instead of a uh, degenerative amplitude. The degenerative amplitude usually are well sclerotic, uh, uh, no fragmentation, and uh, with some uh, sclerosis around it, around the um, schmerl node, presumed the schmerl node. This is more acute and uh, narrow, a narrow zone of transition. So this is a very good clue. Uh, despite of correctly identified uh, discitis osteomyelitis on um, September 9, about uh, 20 days later, uh, patients still have uh, progression of discitis osteomyelitis. And this is another case. Uh, it's about 70-year-old uh, lady with history of uh, psoas abscess. 
uh, from uh, went to an outside institution, had an MRI, and because of this contrast enhancement, solid contrast enhancement, no marrow signal abnormality, no disc abnormality. Axial T2 shows like this, or some ill-defined T2 low signal with extension into the uh, neuroforamen and paraspinal region. Uh, contrast enhancement showed this. So, Uh, however, a July 21st uh, study showed the same thing still there, extending quite extensively versus previous study. The patient had a similar time they had a um, CT. The patient had a CT visual colitis. So this thing is. Uh, probably is so sepsis without discitis and osteomyelitis. This could progress here. Uh, this is a June 16, June 21st, a pretty extensive. And later in June 28th, it's basically shown the same thing. Still no, uh, no bone involvement, no disc involvement. So, psoas abscess can develop from uh, enteric infection. Anyway, the prob uh, later was bi this lesion was later biopsied and showed chronic inflammation and uh, uh, no tumor. So, it's not a tumor, it's chronic inflammation, so we don't know what's causing it. Patient had no follow up since uh, 2008 and uh, was still alive, so should be okay now. This is an 84 year old uh, male uh, with back pain and bacteremia, questionable discitis. Uh, this is the previous study from about uh, four months ago. There's normal post surgical changes. I'm just showing you that some, uh, yes, there is a disc herniation. Diffusion showed nothing. Now I'm moving back to, let's take a look at the um, the positive study showed diffuse mineral edema, epidural abscess. The key thing is a diffusion. Let me see, do I have a diffusion? They didn't do a diffusion image. So this is a T1 post contrast enhancement. S paraspinal infection phlegmon into extension into psoas muscle here's a psoas abscess they didn't extend laterally that far but that's a clear abscess so t2 hypertense signal compared to the rest and uh, hopefully we can see some m plate destruction but the paraspinal infection is very indicative of abscess. Even even with the hardware you can see there's an abscess here. Here's the correlation on, obtained on the same day. Again see the um, end plate destruction here. You have to really look carefully. They all, because that's mixed, both DDD and and osteomyelitis. So you have to look for fresh sign of bony destruction. So far, it's very difficult to call. Even with a small number of air in there, it's not definitive because that could be just a segmental instability of nitrogen air. So this one you have to rely on MRI. This is a discitis uh, osteomyelitis, which uh, was uh, later aspirated. 
So this signal is diffuse, it's not claw sign. In this case, it is a 81-year-old uh, female with neck, uh, uh, back pain, uh, neck pain, I'm sorry, neck pain, ultramental status, and leukocytosis. Um, because of the marrow signal abnormality uh, of L45, uh, we, our radiologists uh, called a possible abscess extending posteriorly and into the epidural space, uh, osteomyelitis of the uh, L4 and L5 uh, spinous process. This is the post contrast images. It does enhance here. It does show enhancement. This is a axial T1 post contrast. It's very hard to read because water is suppressed like that and fat suppressed. It's hard to tell that. So you need a T2 to see whether there's any fluid collection. I don't see any fluid collection. Maybe that's an uh, intraosseous cyst. So anyway, th I disagree with this uh, uh, report because this is very degenerative spinous process. Basically, that's a bastard disease, bone on bone. Spinous process banging on each other, causing a lot of uh, uh, subchondral cyst formation and uh, inflammation. Uh, there's no claw sign. There's no marrow edema in the vertebral infection with on top of the uh, bass strip disease maybe uh, I don't know not that high in my differential diagnosis uh, about two months a uh, month later maybe probably with some treatment the patient uh, uh, edema improved a little bit but still there no sign of infection so about nine months later patient had a CT study to show diffuse uh, degeneration here and didn't change much. Diffuse degenerative changes of the spine have with chronic spinal lysis of bilateral L5. So there's probably sort of some too much uh, micromotion here. So this is not an infection. And I checked the history. There's no history of a fall, uh, infectious disease treatment or referral. Uh, this is the last case. Anyway, this is show the previous uh, it's outpatient imaging center. Uh, just a lot of heterogeneous marrow and some DJD. Nothing going on to show you the comparison. Now I'm showing you the disease, which is about uh, three years later. This is a, the time that a patient present was. Uh, a uh, 51 year old present with a uh, spinal abscess uh, that's a history I was trying to find the abscess but what what I'm trying to show you is the look at the CSF is black black everywhere here the CSF on T1 is black and gray with a line in there so when you don't have a um, uh, way to tell whether there is any infection you just have to scrutinize the T1 and the diffusion also help. Uh, this is a sagittal diffusion that you can see. This di image is distorted, but clearly the CSF here is clearly brighter than everywhere else, without any any uh, spinal involvement, no claw sign. So this is a uh, intrathecal uh, infection. You can see on the post contrast. Uh, you can also see that CSF is collecting, and the bottom is dirtier than the top. And uh, post contrast. Let me see. Post contrast here. A lot of motion, like any everywhere else. So motion actually gave me a clue. There's something going on. So you have to really study carefully. So that is a uh, infection. And that's it. Uh, I gotta go. So that's hopefully that's a uh, helpful. Some cases to show the different differentiation between uh, infection and uh, and the degenerative disease.